everyone, I'm Ellie Eberts, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made my bloomer shorts for my Cafe Mew Mew made uniform from Tokyo Mew Mew. Wow, that's a bit of a mouthful. Anyway, these bloomer shorts are an absolutely adorable addition to this costume, and unlike regular bloomers, which aren't really meant to be seen, these are actually a very visible part of the costume and are quite important. So let's go ahead and get started. shorts are one of the most forgettable parts of this costume, unfortunately. Since they're underneath the dress, you don't really see them, except for a little bit at the thigh, and if any of the characters are bending over. As of this manga illustration, which I think is very cute, albeit a little weird, but very cute. Anyway, we are going to be making these bloomers out of two yards of an off-white cotton. I'm using an off-white cotton so that way they are less opaque than if they were using just a stark white cotton, which it's really easy to see through a white cotton. Using something that's a little bit off-white, it's a lot harder to see through since there's more dyes and things put into the fabric as they're making it. So like I said, I'm using two yards of this off-white Kona cotton. I also have a yard of inch-wide elastic and about a yard and a half of quarter-inch elastic, as well as matching thread a little bit of ribbon, which this can be any sort of ribbon you like. I'm using about an eighth inch wide ribbon. It's in our image colors and it's satin. It's very shiny and pretty. And of course, you're also going to need a pattern. I am using a pant pattern that was originally made for stretch materials. Clearly, cotton is not a stretch material. However, I'm going to be making this pattern absolutely huge. So this way we get some really cute gathers and they're not form fitting anymore. So I just need the basic shape of a pant, not particularly one that fits my body. So with my materials gathered, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my pant legs. Now normally you would cut out two copies of each side of your leg, but we are going to be completely lining these bloomers, so I'm cutting out four copies of each side of the leg, which equals a grand total of eight leg pieces. Now like I said, I'm going to be making these huge, a lot bigger than the pattern. So go ahead and take the pattern that says is your size and then just make it way bigger. <laughs> I mean, I'm adding at least a good, gosh, maybe four to five inches on each side. I'm not going to be adding any to the crotch seam since I don't wanna mess with that really nice curve that we get from the using a commercial pattern. So with all of my pieces cut out, we are going to go ahead and stitch them together. Now, here is the tricky part, everybody. <laughs> Since we're using white cotton, it looks the same on both sides. You don't have a right and a wrong side. However, we need to make two different legs. We can't have all of the legs being the same side. It will not work. So when you're stitching together bloomers, it can get kind of confusing as to which side is the front and which side is the back, especially if you're using a fabric that looks the same on both sides. So in order to make sure that we don't stitch together too many of one side of our leg, which I've definitely done before and had to seam rip, we're going to use a very special pattern as we are stitching these together. So first, we need to determine the front and the back sides. You could have marked these as you were cutting out your pattern, but in case you didn't, your back side is most likely going to be wider at the hem, and it's also going to have a bit of a softer and longer droop here in the crotch whereas your front side is going to be a bit thinner at the hem and it's going to have a sharper droop in the crotch. So on my counter, I have two piles of pieces, one for my fronts and one for my backs. As I stitch these together, I'm going to take a back piece and then I'm going to take my front piece and flip it over on top. So that way your front piece kind of ends up sitting like this. And if you had marked both sides, it would have a backwards F on it like that. Now this one is on top. You're gonna stitch two of those together. That will make two of either your right or your left leg. After that, we are going to do the same thing, but backwards. So you are going to take your back piece here. Oh, that's an odd looking back piece. And then you're going to take your front piece and put it underneath. So that's gonna be underneath now and it should line up something like that. So with that on bottom, ooh, that's not how you spell bottom. How about bottom? There we go. So with your front piece on bottom, then you're gonna go ahead and stitch these sides together. 
this is going to create your other two legs. So really, you just wanna make sure that you're doing the opposite. So you stitch one pair together and then you do the opposite way for the other pair. Once we've attached our leg pieces together, we now have four leg tubes. You should have two that are your right leg and two that are your left leg. If you don't, now is the time to take a second, seam rip, and make sure you have two right legs, two left legs. Next, we are going to stitch these together. We're going to take one leg, it doesn't matter which one, turn it inside out and put it inside the other with right sides together. So let's say we take a right leg, we're gonna flip it inside out, so now the seam allowance is on the inside, and we're gonna stick it inside of our left leg, which still has a seam allowance on the outside. So right sides are together. We're going to match these up around the hem of the leg with the two seams being matched first and then everything else should simply follow. If you cut these all at the same time, this should be a pretty easy procedure. After that, you're simply going to use a straight stitch and stitch all the way along the hem of that leg. All right, now you're gonna go ahead and turn that inside out so now you have a really nice, clean, finished leg. Press it nicely and voila, one leg is done. So now you're going to do the same thing for your other leg. Once your four leg pieces have become two leg pieces, we are now going to add our elastic around the hem. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure two inches up from the hem of each leg. Now I'm just using my basic ruler for this and I'm going to pin all the way around the leg where two inches is. If you have a water soluble marker, you could also use a marker to mark this. Once that is marked, we are gonna go ahead and stitch that with our white thread. So go ahead, stitch around the entire leg along that mark. Now using your presser foot as a guide and noticing how wide your elastic is, we're gonna go ahead and make a channel. My elastic is a fourth inch wide. So I have put my elastic next to my needle and in front of my presser foot just to see kind of where I need everything to be. And I've realized that I need the edge of my presser foot along my first stitch and my needle all the way to the other side. Now we're going to stitch around most of our leg. You're gonna to wanna to leave about one inch to two inches open. So this way we'll be able to thread the elastic through. I've cut some elastic that nicely fits my thigh. I want it to be tight enough that the bloomers will stay poofy and not just fall down my leg. So you want it to have a little bit of stretch when it's fitting your thigh. Next, we are going to put a safety pin on one end and safety pin the other onto our pant leg next to where our seam opens. Now we're going to use the safety pin that's on the elastic to thread our elastic through this channel. This can get kind of annoying at times, not gonna lie, and I definitely stabbed myself pretty good while I was making these because my safety pin popped open. So go slow, go steady, and it'll work out. I'll also note that as you get to the seams, they can be a little tricky. If you press your seams open, you should be able to get through just fine, but it can take a little bit of finagling. Now, once you've threaded your elastic all the way through this casing, we're going to stitch the edges of our elastic together. We're simply going to place these two pieces of elastic on top of each other flat and put a little stitch on there. It could be a zigzag, it could be a straight stitch, it could be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to hold these together. The reason we're putting them on top of each other rather than against each other like we would a normal seam is to reduce the amount of bulk in the elastic. If you put them together like you would a normal seam, that creates a lot of bulk, and there's also a lot less stitches there to hold everything together, whereas if you stitch them together flat, there's a bit more stitching and everything holds nice and secure. Once your elastic is secured, we're going to go ahead and stretch your leg pieces. This is going to get your gathers nice and even. Once you feel comfortable with where your elastic is, let's go ahead and finish off that channel simply by stitching that final inch or two. And of course, now that you've done that on one leg, you're gonna wanna repeat it on the other. Okay, so we have two scrunchy legs. Now we get to attach these legs. We're going to start by putting one leg inside of the other. Since these legs are completely finished, you can put either one inside of either one. You might have to do some inside outing. You wanna make sure that your front side of your leg matches up with your front side of your leg. You don't wanna have the butt to the front or anything like that. They have to match up. Once you have one leg inside of the other with the same sides touching each other, we are going to go ahead and pin together the inner leg seam. So that itty bitty seam on your legs, we're gonna pin that together. And then you're going to simply pin up the other sides of the crotch seam. So you should have a nice U shape that is pinned. Go ahead and stitch that together. Next, we're going to trim off the seam allowance. 
Once your seam allowance has been trimmed, go ahead, flip everything inside out and press it firmly. Now you're also going to stitch that one more time, creating a beautiful French seam. Now you have bloomers. These are wearable, they work. But we are going to go ahead and add a waistband now. I'm going to start by folding over about an eighth inch of the top of my bloomers, and we're going to baste that into place. This stitch is acting as a guide, so that way I don't have to worry about folding over my seam allowance twice as I'm finalizing this waistband. Now we are going to measure about an inch and a half that's going to be folded over. This is going to create an elastic casing for our waistband. Now once you have that folded over, go ahead and stitch it into place, leaving about an inch open so that way we can feed in our elastic. Just like before, I am taking my elastic and measuring it around my waist. You want this to be snug but not uncomfortable. Next, I'm going to feed that elastic through my entire waistband. Just like with the hem of your shorts, once they meet, we are going to lay them on top of each other and stitch it together. Once you have your elastic stitched together, we're again going to scrunchie out the top of our shorts to get all of our gathers even, and then finish off that waistband with a simple stitch in that inch that you left open. Okay, now we have wearable bloomers, but we want to make these just a little bit cuter. So I'm going to add a little bit of ribbon to both of our legs and to the front of our shorts. Since it can sometimes be hard to tell the front of a short from the back of a short, especially with that gathered waistband, we add a ribbon so that way we know which way is which. I'm simply going to cut about six to seven inches of my ribbon and I'm going to burn the edges to make sure they don't fray and then I will stitch them into place. One in the center front of my waistband and one on each side of my legs. Once those are stitched into place, you can go ahead and tie them into cute little bows. Part of why I chose this really thin ribbon is because once it's tied into a bow and pulled really tightly, it's not going to fall out of place. And with that, we have some super duper cute bloomers. Woo! Okay, so I thought the bloomers were a little weird at first, but they're actually kind of cute. They're not cute by themselves by any means. They look quite odd by themselves. But once you put a cute dress over them, like our Cafe Mew Mew dress, they look absolutely adorable. I can't wait to wear these bloomers with the entire costume. I think it's going to be super duper cute. So I hope you guys stay tuned to see what the final version will look like. Of course, if you liked this video, be sure to leave a big ol' thumbs up. And if you really liked it, make sure you hit the big red subscribe button so that way you know when my next video comes out. And until next time, everyone, keep sewing, stay positive, and have fun. And of course, for the future of the earth, I'll be of service. Yeah?